Praise the Lord. Church, if you are there, I said, Praise the Lord. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters at the old church here, and all those who are listening and watching and participating from outside this location, I want to welcome you once again to this special time. The time of the church praying, standing in the gap for our nation Nigeria. Under the auspices of Nigeria, praise coordinated and convened by His Excellency General Yakubo Gawan. And we thank the Lord for helping Nigeria praise for these 22 years. And we pray. That will get to the next level of answers to prayer for our nation, even as we begin another search, another stage of prayers today. I thought the church will say, Amen. Amen. The Lord will answer our prayers for the nation. Amen. Great things will be achieved. All these items and requests were brought before the Lord. The Lord will grant us speedy answers in Jesus' name. We're going to have a brief moment of looking at the promise of God and applying it to ourselves on this special day. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for what you have done already and what you are going to do. Open our eyes to behold your will, your promise, and the path of progress for our nation, even as we listen to your word at this time. Bless our nation. Bless our leaders. Bless the church. And bless all of us who are here today. Make us change agents in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. You can have your seats. I'm coming to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, reading from verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. Solomon was praying for his own nation. And the Lord said, in answer to that prayer, I have heard thy prayer. We have gathered here today to pray for our nation. And the Lord is assuring us, I have heard your prayer. Yeah. And I have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. Verse 13, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, it says, if there are conditions that concern us, conditions of plague, locust, devastation, and downward trend in our lives and economy. It says, if we realize this, if we then, verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. That's what we are looking at today. If my people, verse 14, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and turn and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. In that verse, God gives us divine assurance. 
And as I look at that verse of scripture today, we have the subject, the topic to deal with is divine assurance when Nigeria prays. When the nation prays, when the nation calls upon the Lord, the Lord himself is giving us assurance from heaven that he will hear. As you look at the first line there, if my people which are called by my name shall pray, I will hear from heaven. That was God's assurance to Solomon. It came to him and came to his nation in response to the king's request. The prayer referred to here is not a casual prayer, a common prayer, the usual prayer, the superficial prayer that many people pray many times. It was a national purposeful prayer because of unusual challenges that the nation will be facing because of problems that defy solution in the nation that's described in verse 13 that when the heavens are shut up and there's no rain and because of that everything agricultural and the produce of the field of the harvest is affected and then there is drought and there's famine and there's devastation and there are problems and then it says there is pestilence it says because of that special condition perplexing national problems that will demand prevailing prayer if my people will pray then god says i will answer he will answer us as you look at that if my people the theologians who are very quick to point out that God was not talking about a gentle nation. That God was talking to that peculiar nation, the nation of Israel. And that if any gentle nation like Nigeria, if we go to that verse of scripture, that we are taking what belongs to other people. It's like you claiming a letter that wasn't addressed to you. But really you understand. As you come to the latter part of the prophets in the Bible. And you come to Osea chapter 1. Osea chapter 2 rather. The Lord now clears it for us. In Osea chapter 2 verse 23. It says... I will sow her unto me in the earth. I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people. Listen to this. God himself now tells us and he points out that there are gentle nations. These nations that were not called by his name. He says... I will say to them, which were not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. It's on the basis of that, on the promise of God, on the prophetic statement of Hosea, that those who are not my people, I will call them my people. That's why we're able to claim the promise the Lord has given, if my people who are called by my name, incidentally, Paul the Apostle made use of quoted Osea. And it says in Romans chapter 25 and chapter 9, verse 25, verse 26, I will call them my people which were not my people by creation by redemption, by repentance towards God, and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, we're now accounted God's people. And we can claim, you and I can claim, our nation Nigeria can claim the unfailing promise of God for our nation Nigeria. God will answer the prayer of Nigeria. Is the church saying amen? amen? Come back to Second Chronicles 
chapter 7 verse 14 and as i look at this verse there are three things here number one our hope as nigeria prays as we come together today there is hope in our heart on the basis of the promises of god that he will answer our prayer our hope as nigeria prays point number two our humility while nigeria prays as we come before the lord seeking his face he wants us to manifest humility if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves our humility while nigeria prays point number three our healing when nigeria prays it says i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land our hope our humility our healing come back to number one our hope as nigeria prays if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land the lord is telling us there that the river of his mercy flows beyond a single nation even under the old dispensation as you go through the old testament when god had this special peculiar law for the children of israel you will still see that other people other countries other nations apart from israel had their prayers answered on the basis of the promise god had given to israel and as we pray there is hope for our country as we're praying just as there was hope for them answered prayer divine mercy is available for nigeria from this day things will turn around for the better for nigeria in jesus name incidentally you understand as you look at nigeria spelling it out and help me now and i go on g e r i and a you understand as we look at nations in the old testament and nineveh i individuals that were notoriously evil g gentiles e egypt r rehab i islands a assyria all those individuals and nations they were not israelites and yet as you look at the promise god gave to israel they came in on the mercy of god they came in on the terms and the conditions that the lord had given you remember Nineve, and you remember there is hope for this country nigeria because if god could answer the prayer of uh, Nineve, i'm telling you and the word of god is assuring us god will answer our prayer the story of Nineveh you find in Jonah chapter 3 from verse 5 all through to verse 10. Nineveh was reaching up by Jonah and many people are writing up Nigeria and they are saying that the country is going to disintegrate. I say no it's not going to disintegrate. They say there is no hope for the country. They say we have come to the end of our prosperous time. I say we are just beginning. Something new is going to happen. In fact, Jonah expected that Nineveh will perish and be totally forgotten. The people repented and they prayed to God and God spared them and preserved them. On the basis of that, I say 
there is hope in God for Nigeria. I, there are some individuals to read about in the Old Testament. A very terrible one, more terrible than anyone in Nigeria, is called Manasseh. It was labeled, we can label him incorrigible. We can label him irredeemable. We can label him irreformable. Do you understand that even that individual, even though he suffered, his heart that was proud was humbled. And he prayed to God, Manasseh of all people. And God changed him for good. And then he came to the positive side. If that man had mercy, I want to tell you today, there is hope for Nigeria. Yeah. The Gentile nations, in fact, the Jewish people had the popular saying. They said the Gentiles were wood for fire. Firewood. That God is going to burn them up. They had no mercy for Gentiles. And yet you understand, as you look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 21, it says, In his name shall the Gentiles trust. In his name shall the Gentiles trust. And here we are, Gentile nation. And here we are, Gentile continent. And we are trusting in Christ. He did not die for just Israel. He died for the whole world. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away, tell me out aloud, the seas of the world. Gentiles all included. And I say if God is answering the prayer of the Gentiles, there is hope for Nigeria. And at the destination were mentioned almost every time. And we mentioned them in the negative. And that nation is Israel. And as you look at, sorry, it's uh, Egypt. As you look at Egypt, I'm going to show you a verse you might never have read concerning Egypt. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 19. Isaiah chapter 19, and I'm reading from verse 24. In Isaiah chapter 19, verse 24, hear the word of the Lord. It says, in that day, Shall, each, shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria? Even a blessing in the midst of the land. Look at verse 25. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Somebody there, tell me out aloud. Say it aloud. Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. If God could turn around and have mercy on a nation like Egypt, the old time, ancient, and long time enemy of Israel, and yet it says, Blessed be Egypt, my people. Are you there today as an individual? And it appears that you've gone so far and they labeled you like an enemy, even of Christ. You're coming to Christ and the Lord is going to have mercy on you. If he said, blessed be Egypt, my people, you're going to be blessed even in the Lord in Jesus' name. And since Egypt will thus be favored, there is hope for Nigeria. Your father name Rahab. I cannot begin to tell you the depths of the rottenness and defilement that that woman went. And yet, the Bible says she perished not. She received the message and the messengers of peace. And Rahab chose life rather than death. Her destiny was not decided by others, though her life was not that commendable. If there was hope for her, you, there's hope for you. Yeah. Our nation, there's hope for our nation. Yeah. As you look at the Old Testament, and you come to the New Testament, there are islands. In fact, these islands were called barbarian islands. 
It tells us in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. It was superstitious. They didn't have the light. They didn't know the gospel. They were far away from light. With every description of that word light. Knowledge. Education. Economy. Understanding. Whatever it was. They were far away. And yet as you look at their story. Blessing came to them. Redemption came to them. And the goodness of God came to them. And I say, if there was hope, or since there was hope for that island, there's hope for Nigeria. Assyria will yet experience a blessing in the midst of the land. When I was reading about Egypt, I read about Assyria at the same time. Isaiah chapter 19, reading from verse 25, it says, chapter 19, verse 25, I say, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance. There is hope for our country, Nigeria. We're coming back to Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen. Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen. If my people, and now Nigeria comes in, because he says, "I call them my people, which were not my people." And those who had not received mercy in the past, in the present, through Christ, will receive mercy. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, shall humble themselves and seek my face, shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, have you seen a wretch that humility comes before the prayer and comes along with the prayer? Humility comes before seeking the face of the Lord. That humility comes in line alongside seeking the face of the Lord. Humility comes before turning your face from your wicked ways. Humility comes in line alongside ways turning away from your wicked ways in a natural pride and self-justification humility is the last thing to cross our mind everybody else everybody is blaming another person for our national problems and our personal problems the virtue we give the last place to which is humility actually is the first key that opens the door of hope for the individual or for the family or for the whole nation that's why it says if my people who are called by my name will pray in humility we accept we are part of the problem in our nation Praying, we acknowledge that we cannot overcome the consequences of the problems we created for ourselves. Humility makes us to say from the depth of our heart that we cannot free ourselves from the calamities we caused by our own sinfulness. It's humility that makes us to know that we cannot save ourselves from the ferocious lions when we nursed from the wells. We need God to save us from our worst enemy. I know it's our worst enemy, the one you see full less when you stand before the mirror. We are our own enemies. That's why we need to come before the Lord 
if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves seek my face pray and seek my face we'll seek the face of the lord because we're seeking his favor we're seeking his mercy we're seeking his grace to secure his sympathy to draw his attention to our situation and he the almighty god that has the whole universe to control and care for will answer our prayer as we seek his face with honesty before the majesty before his majesty which he demands and then he says not only that we're praying and still keep on sinning praying and still keep on in our pride he says we turn from a wicked ways then he says he will hear from heaven we're reaping today the life threatening fruits of the death dealing seeds were sowed yesterday to keep on taking the poison those deadly effects the doctor is treating you know, is gradual suicide that's why it's necessary that will turn from a wicked ways that's the only thing to do so that will be preserved from self-destruction number one is our hope number two is our humility number three it's our healing come back to second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways of the condition that will do the right thing and we seek the face of the lord and pray to god in the right way on his terms he says now he promises us the answer he says then will i hear from heaven god will hear our prayers and he says when he hears from heaven i will forgive their sin number one and then number two i will heal their land forgiveness deals with the past and the present healing deals with the present and the future forgiveness removes a guilt and condemnation Forgiveness restores us to fellowship and divine favor. Forgiveness blots out the record of all our past transgressions. It's forgiveness that brings us to justification before the Lord and it counts us blameless in his sight. Forgiveness presents us loved and lovable with all the beloved citizens in his kingdom forgiven the almighty holds nothing against us as individuals when you come to the lord you turn away from your sin and you believe on the lord jesus christ as a substitute as the one that paid the price for your sin and you hold him as your lord savior king and master you're forgiven and then he sets us free and sets you free from the strongholds and the strong cords of sin that bound you in the past forgiven he accounts you now blameless and he doesn't listen to the accuser of your soul he recreates us and he gives us grace to live a brand new life that's forgiveness but then he says that he will do something else that I will heal their land. The healing of the land goes beyond the healing of an individual. He's talking of the land and he's talking of the nation. It will heal our land. It will heal our nation. The healing here means recovery. The healing here means reform. The healing here means repair. The healing here refers to renewal, refers to the restoration of the nation. The healing of the land, 
healing of the nation brings reform and revitalization. How? Imagine it now. For a local government, think of it. For a state, think of it. For our nation, for the whole country. When it says, I will heal their land. What's it referring to? It's telling us about reformation, restoration, and recovery. Number one, of our health care system. And the welfare of the poor, the welfare of the children, and the welfare of rural and urban dwellers. If individuals got healed, but the land is not healed, there is no chance for rejoicing because we're still going to go back to that same terrible thing that we suffered from and were healed of. Think about our nation. Think about the hospitals. Think about the healthcare system. We need healing for those healthcare systems. And we need healing everywhere. It's talking about healthcare system. It will give you good, give us good healthcare care system in this land in Jesus' name. It talks about the healing of our land. It's talking about either our economy. It's talking about poverty alleviation. It's talking about business practice. Investors and all those people coming to our land so that the economy will boom again. It, that's what is a healing you know, of our nation, of our land. A is talking of the healing restoration, reformation of the hearts, the arts, the culture, and the social reform that has to go around all the arts that ought to be preserved, that are useful, profitable for the nation. When there is healing of the nation, there will be a new theme, and there will be a new change, and there will be a good presentation of the arts and the culture and the social reform of the nation to other nations in our continent and beyond our continent. It talks about the healing of the land. Look at law, look at justice, look at the judiciary, and look at the administrations of impartiality. When our land is healed, it will affect the law, it will affect uh, the judiciary, and affect all the areas that are to deal with crimes and everything. That's the healing of the land. It's not just that you know we're healthy. What if you're healthy and oppressed? You're healthy and there's no justice. The healing of the land includes the law, judiciary, and administration of impartiality. I, our industrialization, our institutions of education, of learning, as well as research. And it's talking about national peace. God will give us peace in our nation talking about national security there will be security protection in our land in jesus name equity equally dividing and equally sharing and benefiting from all the things that the nation has for everyone G there is for good governance and when all those things are there and we see a peaceful nation a progressive nation, a prosperous nation, then we can say the Lord has healed our land. It will heal our land. The healing of our land will restore health, restore wholeness to every sector of our society. God has promised to heal our land. And if we humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways, and pray with expectant faith he will answer he answers prayer he cannot deny his word he will do as he has said if we pray as he has outlined he will grant us peace i said he will grant us peace he will grant us progress he will grant us prosperity there will be unity in our land there will be security in our land. We shall have a nation of our dreams. God 
faithful and merciful will do as he has said but the question is will you do as he has outlined in his word i'm asking you a question will you do as he has outlined in his word herein lies the healing of our nation if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn and turn and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven answers have come redemption has come restoration has come recovery has come for our nation i will forgive their sin he will forgive you too i said he will forgive you too and heal their land our land will be healed you will be healed our families will be healed local governments will be healed our states will be healed our own nation will be healed you will live to be partakers of the promised blessings of god in jesus name why don't you rise up on your feet and present this before the lord there is hope we must be humble and then we must understand there is healing for our nation open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer